Hello, sunshines. How art thou? How art thou? This is Creative Stitch and Diva, and there you go, Miss Dizzy Peach. Hey, How hey. are you? Good evening. I'm wonderful. I'm doing great. How are you doing? I am great, especially since you're on right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've listened to your Saturday morning shenanigans, so I'm like, listen, you need to bring the shenanigans over to... The divas. <laughs> the divas. <laughs> yes. It's been a while. It's been a while. I enjoyed hanging out with you uh, the last time. So I'm, I'm used to Saturday mornings. So in the evenings, it's a different vibe, but it's good. I love my evenings. I'm a night owl, so I love my evenings. But um, I wanted to talk today about crochet patterns because you're mm -hmm. so good at them to the point where, like, when I did your pattern, it went like easy. Like it was so easy. And some patterns get me so frustrated. So, so yours one, so easy. Which one did you do? The mask was my first one. Oh well, yeah, okay, that's true. Okay. Mask was the first one. And that one I thought was gonna be kind of difficult, but mm -hmm. it really wasn't. It was okay. not difficult at all. So that's why I said, um, and then I think the last one you did, the last um, the, uh, video you were on here, you showed how you did your hat that you had on because everybody yes. loved it. And you gave a little secret on how to do it. Yes. And you also helped me with a little issue I was having with trying to make a Christmas tree skirt. And you was just oh, that's right. saying these numbers. And I'm like, no, nah, I didn't do that. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> So I said, what would be the most best thing for us to know is like some basics on crochet pattern because okay, I don't think I'm great at it. I can read it and I taught myself, but for me to do it, it's a whole nother situation. Yeah, it can be, um, it can be interesting. It can be challenging just depending on, you know, what it is that you're doing what you're trying to communicate, if you're using language and abbreviations that people are comfortable with, um, if the directions actually make sense and work out properly, <laughs> that's very important as well. Um, so yeah, so, there, so there's, a there, there's a lot to it. Um, I think sometimes people feel like, you know, they buy patterns and use them and they're like, oh, that's no big deal. But to actually write a pattern versus reading and using one is can can be very different. Exactly. So yeah, we can um we can we can definitely talk through it. Uh, my first one, I'm trying to find a copy of it really quickly. My first one was a hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> You keep saying that. I I did, I, well, I it, to me it, it's it was a hot mess, and I'm trying to see if I can find um, a, a version of it to share. I think I can share my screen from here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let so I'm gonna see if I can find it, but I basically. Um, <sighs> <laughs> I, yeah, it, it it just it it, it was it was interesting. <laughs> I what thought was I, it? I thought I was doing something good, and um, it 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 wasn't. So it was for a simple. It was for a peach, um, and I called it the perfect peach, although the pattern was beyond nowhere near perfect. Um, <laughs> I, called, I called it the perfect peach pattern, and. Um, I'm sorry, I should have had I should have had this up. Um it was just a simple uh flat peach that you could use as an applique. Um I actually used it for um some face cloths and it's it's not bad, but uh, let me tell you. All right, well I can't find it right now, but I, I'll make sure that I share it somewhere. A little bit later, because I don't, I don't want to waste. Too I know much. What, exactly which one you were talking about. Okay, I thought it was a coaster. Mm -hmm. Um, you can use it as a coaster too, right? 
Yeah, you could use it as a coaster. Um, when I made it up for the face cloth, I used the, um, was it the red, no, not red heart. Um, ooh, I used some scrubby yarn with it so that it would make a nice, you know, give you a nice exfoliation um, <laughs> when, you, when you scrubbed. Um, but, you know, the instructions all ran together. Um, mm -hmm. they, they didn't, uh, they didn't flow well. Um, I had a hard time when I went to go back and look at it. Oh, here it is. I think I've got it. I think I'm going to be able to share it. Um, okay. if I can get it open. Um, yeah. And so when I went back and tried to make it myself from my own pattern, I found that I was having to put tick marks and, you know, point to where, you know, like I couldn't figure out where I was. And if I walked away from it and came back. I understand that part. <laughs> yeah. I, I was like, oh, I don't know where I am. I don't know what's going on. Um, so let me one second. Let's see. Let me share. And I'm going to use this as an example of what not to do. Examples of what not to do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what not to do. Um, okay. And you'll have to let me know. Yeah. If you can see. Nope. Not yet. Huh? Let's try again. Share screen. I'm just going to share the entire screen. because that will be easiest. Okay. All right. Can you see my screen? Not yet. I have to approve it, but I don't even see it yet. No? Okay. Yeah, I don't see it yet. You got to click. Um, after you click the. Oh, lost permission. Okay. Oh, boy. All right. Let me see. Well, yeah. okay. I, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't want to waste people's time. Let's just put it this way. It was a hot mess. <laughs> um, I'm going to fix, I'm going to fix my settings so that I can screen, so I can screen share and, um, and then we'll, we'll kind of come back to it. But, but what, what did you find was the thing about trying to write a pattern? So, um, I'm not great with numbers uh, at all. I could count. But for some apparent reason, when I do a pattern, mm -hmm. I can't count. I feel like I need to go back to school, like second grade, to learn how to count. What? <laughs> <laughs> because the numbers never add up. And then I, I feel like even if I write stick figures to try mm -hmm. to keep up with the count, the stick figures always like end up with one extra or two extra or or. I don't know what the heck I'm doing wrong. I know when I tried to make the hat, I made a hat. I did a pattern, my first pattern that okay. I published. My first pattern I published. I made other patterns before, but I never published only because I get nervous. So the thing about it is I'm the type of person that like to do stuff and push it out okay. instead of the process, which is basically I should have had testers. I should have had done it over myself again. And I don't always do that. I just push it out because in my mind, I could just do a, I could do whatever I want in my mind, but sure. if I was to write it out, it doesn't work the way I want it to work when I write it out. Mm -hmm. I'm the crocheter who is, um, I don't have to have a pattern. I could just like the shirt behind me. I uh -huh. just did it on my own. And if somebody asks me how, I can't tell you, I don't know how. And so they say, have notes when you make a pattern to make your notes. And that's what I did. But it still does not add up. Hmm. It don't add up. I don't know why. Okay. So you can, you can freestyle and it works out. But the pattern is, is challenging. Okay. When I write the pattern, mm -hmm. what, like I said, I should have people test it. <laughs> so instead, I had my friend, my um, my sister, Gail, she would test a lot of the patterns that I give her. And she goes, 
baby, you need to fix this. <laughs> oh, girl. Like, don't right. work no more. Like, stick to your old job. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Or she'll, you know, give me her opinion on what I should change and what I shouldn't change, including that hat. Oh, okay. Where's my hat? This. This hat. Like I said, this is the very first hat that I published. I made many, many patterns, and it does not have to have um, a graph on it. I made just regular patterns on my own. But okay. this one right here, yeah, that took me some time, and it's simple. Okay. <laughs> and you wrote the pattern. You didn't write the pattern. I'm sorry. I got lost. No, I wrote it. I wrote it okay. and published. I even did a, a video tutorial on it. Okay. Um. But the in the beginning, the video tutorial didn't even add up with my written pattern. The written pattern is in Etsy. But the video, okay. because I'm so used to just crocheting and getting it done mm -hmm. and not writing it down, the two never added up. So if it wasn't for my sister, for do, like saying like, look, your first two lines are messy and right. I had to change it. So thank God she caught it and I changed it. And that's when I published it. So has anybody else used it, worked it, or given you feedback on it? Not yet, no. I um, literally just posted on Tuesday. Okay. All right, cool. So can you mm, – you don't want to share it because we want people to buy it. So we'll have to, <laughs> we'll have to look at it later. And, and I added and, a graph. So that's another thing. Because okay. I added the graph to it, many might be confused. Because they have to read the graph. So I would add, you know, the beginning, which is basically the the brim. Yeah. I added the brim. And then I added, you know, to do some crochet rounds. And then okay. I added the, um, what you call it, the graph, the chart. So the chart is in there. And I say, follow the chart. And then I, I closed it. And, and so it, and that's at, basic. The, at the part where you say, follow the chart. You don't have any increases or decreases, right? It's just no, like just straight. Yeah, rectangle. almost like a rectangle, but you just kind of keep going. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's that's not I say it's simple, but I guarantee you somebody's gonna be like, I need help. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna get it and look at it. I'm gonna get it and look at it so we can see what you got going on here. Um yeah, we're 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 gonna we're gonna have to uh we're gonna have to make that happen. Um, so um, what happened? <laughs> what the heck? She kicked herself out by accident. Oh my gosh. But if you want the pattern, the pattern is pretty good. It's a cool pattern. If you want the pattern, it's in my Etsy shop and it's the um, link is in the um, description as well as Busy Peaches link to, in the description. But um, yeah, I don't know where Miss Peachy went. She didn't left. She <laughs> <laughs> I brought the shenanigans with me. I see. <laughs> I brought the shenanigans with me. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Okay. Trust me, it was. It'll be worth it. Okay. <laughs> Come on, you. You know it. You know it's always gonna be something when I pop up, right? You know that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm like, wait, what did she do? <laughs> I, I, well, I didn't mean to do it. I was trying to fix so I could screen share, uh, and uh, you could at least get the uh, the, <laughs> the notification. I got it. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> oh, God. There it is, the perfect peach. Okay, so that's the first. That's the first pattern that I did. Now, look at round six. Okay. Is that not a hot mess express? One single crochet, one half double crochet, one. Yeah, but look how crochet. long it is. Look how long it is. Oh, that's a paragraph. It's a paragraph for one round, for one one row. It's a uh -huh. hot. It's a hot mess. Can, can, I mean, could you could you imagine trying and. Look away for a second and, and not and I will get where I'm at. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I still have this out there and I have to take it down because if anybody were to try to work this, I would just be embarrassed because it's just, <laughs> it's doable though. Like, I, I mean, mean, it works, but <laughs> I have done patterns since then in a way that makes it easier for my, you know, for, for you to, to, to read it. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to show you an okay. example of, uh, I'll, I'll pull it up and I'll show you an example of one of my more recent ones that I think makes a lot more sense. Or should I show the, I'll show the mask, right? Because you, you use the mask, right? Yeah, I used it. You're going to show it? Yeah. I'm going to show it. Mm -hmm. We said, no, don't do that. You want me to show a different it's one? It's to you, but... I think that's that mask is the most unique mask out there. That's what drew me to it. So I'll tell I'll, I'll tell you how I how I did it. Um, can you still see my screen? Yep. Here we go. Okay. See, nobody has a mask like that out there. So the way that I did this was right. Nobody had one. If you've seen all of the other masks, they're kind of clunky. Yes. Right? They're really bulky and they take up a lot of space. Yeah. Some of them, they're acrylic. And so to me, they're heavy and they're hot. Yeah. Um, um, this one is cotton. And what I did was I took the sewing pattern and cut it out. Right. So everybody was sewing these masks. Right. There was mm -hmm. a free downloadable sewing pattern that you could do. And so I downloaded it, cut it out, and then I began to crochet and match it up to the flat pattern. Mm. So I would crochet it, it. So it was a half of a half of a mask. So I would crochet along the bottom until I got to the end. And then I would go around and do the next row and, you know, and just work my way across until I got that shape. Um, so I, I really just kind of did it out of thin air and I wrote everything down as I did it. Now, the one thing that you'll see different here um, from that first pattern is that it's not all on one page, first of all. Um, one page patterns can be done. Um, but I, to me, I think it's worth it to spread everything out because you can get more information in multiple pages. Mm -hmm. And so for this one, I make sure I talk about the skill level. I talk about the size, the materials that you need, the terminology. So this is kind of like your introduction to it. And the other one, okay, get started. <laughs> <laughs> get, your, <laughs> get, get your hook, get your yarn and start, right? Uh -huh. This one gives you a little bit more, right? Exactly, you know, what you'll need. Um, and then the terminology. And we'll, we'll, we can go and talk about terminology in a minute. Um, the next thing I did was I made use of videos that were out and available. So the fact that you did a video tutorial with your pattern, I think is great because people learn differently. Yeah. And so some people have a hard time with reading the pattern, but they'll follow the video better. Um, yeah. Some people prefer charts. I absolutely hate charts, but, you know, if that works for folks, go for it. Um, but I included video from other of uh, some of our friends. So you'll recognize Tony Lipsy here, um, how to make a chainless foundation um, crochet stitch. That's something that you've never done. I didn't want to take up three more pages explaining how to do it. Right. Go look at the video and come back. <laughs> right. Right. Um, same thing here. How to do straight edges because I wanted the edges of that mask to be straight. Um, and so Alicia's uh, video on straight edges for double crochet, single crochet. Um, and go and take a look. And then also for the invisible clothes. So I use what's out there and I gave all, you know, the proper credit to the person and included the link so you could go and find it. Any notes, those kind of come after I've done it and worked. Um, I put any additional notes that 
be added out initially in my care instructions. Okay. Um, and then I'll do the last page. The last thing that I'll show real quick is for visually, I need to have things separated. So I made sure that, you know, contained, you know, one row, um, you know, maybe it had multiple, like the first row, because I want to give a little bit of a explanation. Um, and then I am put, I put check boxes because I yes. was to to ch check off where I was. Yes. Right? That was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, Cause I would get lost. Like, wait a minute, you know, or if I got busy or, you know, somebody called me and I put it down and came back. Um, so all of my patterns, I put the check boxes on there. So you can either mark it with a pencil and erase it and use it again, or put it in a sheet protector. That's and what I did. Can, yep. And use a dry erase, you know, to yeah. do that. Okay. So I'm not going to show the whole pattern. If you want to see the whole pattern, you have to buy it. Yeah, it's <laughs> worth it. I'm, it's worth it. Yeah. I, I made so many of them. Uh huh. I I, I divified it, but I made yep. so many of them. You got but it of was inspired by yours. Yes, <laughs> yes, and that's how we met, right? Mm -hmm. That's how we we got to chit chatting and got to talking. Yeah. Um, so I think I have I've missed if there have been any questions. I don't think I've seen no. any questions so far. Um, but. Yeah, so so I try to write and improve my pattern writing based on what what I like to see, what worked best for me. And I found that I was using my finger and trying to follow the line and I was putting check marks and um if there wasn't a count of uh stitches at the end, I was, you know, writing in how many I had done. And so I tried to make sure when I went back and wrote a pattern that it already included as much of that as possible. Right. So when you do yours, do you have testers or you just, you test your own? So for the mask one, I tested it myself. Um, I should have had someone test it. Um, but because I did one size fits most, uh, I didn't worry about, you know, sizing. Um, and I made multiple. I made the 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 first version. I did it in white, and I wrote it out as I was doing it. The second one, I think I did it in blue, and I was typing it on you know in PowerPoint as I was doing it and making any corrections. Right. Okay. Um, and then I went back with and and I read through that, cleaned it up. And then I use that to make the third one. So I gotcha. followed my instructions. I didn't just go, you know, because at that point I was like, oh, I made three of these. I kind of know what to do next. But yeah. I made sure that I read it, you know, line by line, word for word, and and did what I was telling myself to do. That makes sense. <laughs> um, but for other patterns, I use I do use testers. Um if you're familiar with my uh, the Empower People uh, bandana, yes, um, this one I definitely use testers for this one because you know we had hoped that it would be very widely um, distributed, and the person that actually designed this um, was Casapinka, and she did a schematic, so she actually had the outline of it, and she knew what she was going to do for the knit version. So I just like I, just like with the mask, I printed out, um, you know, on a piece of paper and and wrote out the dimensions and then crocheted to fit those dimensions. Gotcha. And so that's how they ended up being, you know, the knit and the crochet version ended up being exactly the same in terms of measurement um, because we use the same schematic and um, you know measurements. Um, but yes, we had lots of people test that. We had lots of um, crocheters test it, uh, which was good because um, people use different yarns. They mm -hmm. use different size hooks. Um, even though I, you know, shared with them what was recommended, you know, they didn't necessarily have that. So I, I said, "That's fine. Try it." You know, with a different one. Um, and so some of them came out bigger, some were smaller, some not quite as tight. 
Yeah. Um, one person didn't, you know, like the idea of doing the straight edges without a turning chain. So she was like, well, I'm going to add a turning chain because I, I did. Yeah. I remember you saying that. And I'm like, I need a turning chain. I yeah. need a turning chain. But you then know. I found out when mm -hmm. I did this, I didn't do a turning chain. So that was just weird. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have stopped using turning chains now as much as possible. Really? Um, because it leaves the bulk at the end. Yep, and it leaves that little, that it does. little bubble, that little, you know. It um, does. And I I really like um, having straight edges. You can see that's about as straight as you can get. That's straight. Um, and so I really, really like straight edges. And so when I got that video from Alicia Little John talking about how to make straight edges. I was like, oh girl, this is the truth. I, I love, it. I love <laughs> it. I love it. You guys have to go find it. Um but yes, you know, so one one person was like, I have to have a turning chain. I don't I can't go back into that that next stitch. I promise you you can. But she was like, I'm not gonna do it. I said, okay, that's fine. So she did hers with a turning chain. And so it looked a little different, which was fine. But Having testers was good because I had a typo. And so right away, everybody was like, hey, row eight's wrong. <laughs> hey, the count is off on row 12. You know, <laughs> this didn't work out. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, and I thought I had looked through it and looked through it. So it's great to have a second set of eyes. Okay. Yeah, definitely. What about gauge? So uh, my aunt told me, and she's mm -hmm. the one who taught me how to crochet. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about gauge. That's what she always said. Don't worry about gauge. You don't have to worry about that. And then my other crochet mentor said she really never paid attention to the gauge. Mm -hmm. She would look at what the yarn and the hook that the crochet used. Uh -huh. She would look at that and then um, use her discretion, discretion. But they never did any gauges and I don't either. So gauge can be very important depending on what you're making. If you are making garments, if you are making clothing to be worn, not accessories like hats and 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 scarves, right? Um but sized garments, I think that gauge is very important um, because we don't all crochet with the same tension. Okay. And so I have a very tight stitch. I pull my yarn tight. Um, and also the way that I hold my yarn and projects lends to a tighter stitch. Um, some people have a grip such that they're tension is not that tight. And so we could do the same number of stitches across and the same number of rows up and it measured totally different. Yeah. Um, but the standard for gauge is to measure a four inch by four inch square to see what, um, ooh, how many stitches across and how many um, rows. So this is a standard four by four swatch that you can use to, to gauge. If you happen to have, you know, a full garment already, then you can just take your ruler and measure four, you know, by four and count how many stitches and how many rows. Oh, okay. Um, but for clothing, if I were to make a, a top, a sweater, um, that was supposed to be fitted, um, gauge, gauge would be important. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I don't like measuring gauge. I don't, I don't like swatching. Yeah. Francis, I never swatch for gauge. I don't like swatching. Only, re only reason I like swatching is when I come up with a new colorway and I want to see how it looks. That looks dope. Well, Right? <laughs> that's the only time I like to swatch. I don't swatch. To me, it's like a waste of time. I'm ready to get into it. I'm ready to start because I'm excited about the project, right? I'm usually excited about what I'm doing. So I just want to start. 
Yeah, um, that's how I am. Uh, so, age. <laughs> yeah, so therefore I haven't made a whole lot of clothes <laughs> because I don't want to. Exactly. That's what made this one the last one. And that's why it stays right there because I want everybody to know I can do it. I just won't do it. Right. <laughs> So with hats, you know, I don't necessarily have to worry about gauge. I worry about measurements. Okay. You know, so I worry about, you know, I know my head circumference is 23. So I need to make sure that it's 20, you know, that first row is 23. And then I can go from there. Um, so I tend, I tend to go by measurements by inches, depending on what it is. Scarves, hats. Yeah. How um even like fingerless gloves um so yeah if, if you're gonna do designing for um for clothing you, you you need to gauge you need to swatch um you need to do those things so gauge is important for clothing but i do i i really don't pay attention to it because i do a lot of graph gaining so it, it it's not really for me but yeah. so many people tell me, um, can I get a 50 by 50? So I'm in my mind, I'm thinking 50 stitches by 50 rolls when they're saying 50 inches. inches. Right. Yeah. So that is, so I get confused because my program goes by stitches and rolls. Ah. Right. If I put inches, the inches is not going to add up. It's differently when you adding the rolls and the stitches. Okay. So explaining that to someone is hard. Yeah, so, they're not a crocheter. They don't get yeah, it. Yeah, it, it, it's really hard to explain that. So I kind of just leave it out and I just say uh, full size, twin size, you know, king, right. queen. I because just you already that. know how many stitches right that's gonna be okay exactly. okay and, and it's different too when you're doing it with single crochet and half double crochet mm -hmm. um we don't do double crochet at all for what i do but it, it's different and i don't think a lot of people realize that including crocheters not just non-crocheters crocheters don't realize that either or your yeah. team makes a difference now, there's also something else that you have to keep in mind when you're talking about stitches and tension. You also have to be aware of whether your pattern is written in U.S. terms or U.K. terms. Right. Right. Because what a double crochet means to us is different mm -hmm. in the United Kingdom. And so if you are using a pattern that is written in UK terms um, and you don't make the adjustment, your item is not going to be the same size. Yeah, I found that out one day. Yeah. <laughs> this was when I first started though. When I first started, I'm was like, it, was it's it telling elongated? me it's really half double. Yeah, and it, was it really like, wasn't half double. Right, right. So yeah, so you have to, you have to be clear on that um, when you are, um, you know, looking through your, through your pattern. Um, yeah. I was making a hat for someone. I, this mm -hmm. is when I first started though. And I was being nice to everybody. Like I'm gonna make you a hat. I'm gonna make you a hat. Yeah. And I made the hat and it looked like it could fit on like three people heads. And was yeah. like, I got a big head, but damn Shauna. <laughs> Like, <laughs> that's when you put a drawstring at the brim and say, Look, tie it tight. <laughs> I ain't give it to him. I know he was looking at me like I was crazy. I'm right. like, Uh, but he, that's when he was like, Uh uh. But then years went by and he saw my skills. He was like, Oh, okay, I'm you're strange. not making monster hats now, <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so yeah, there's a lot that can affect, um, your finished product and, and a pattern and how the pattern is written and all of that good stuff. So, um, but yeah, so I have some other things to kind of share with you some good tips and tricks for, you know, where to, to start with finding things like your abbreviations, how to understand 
uh, Gage. Oh, I see you got your notebook. Okay, I yo. sure do. I'm not playing. Okay. <laughs> Listen, y'all go get your notebook. I'm not playing. We'll give you a minute to get your notebook, get your pencil, get your paper. Yes, right. We're going to give you some we tips. We got to get this going. Yes. yes. Because and, how am I supposed to do this? And I don't even know. So tell me this, right? I, I, I already know the answer to this, but tell the people. what, like, Why do you care about writing patterns now? You write graph, graph games. Why do you care about writing patterns? I want to write patterns because I'm trying to do more things for passive income. I need more passive income. So I need to find ways that I could go to bed at night and not have to worry about anything and still get that ching, 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 ching. That's right. all I need to hear is ching, 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 ching. And it's, it's something also to you always, I know when you post something, someone is always saying, do you have a pattern? Do you have a pattern? Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you have a pattern? Yep. And, it, and, and, and I'll hear it so much to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm going to do a pattern. Mm -hmm. do a pattern. And well, then you I don't post because you're like, I don't want to hear the question. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Passive income. So absolutely. That that's the thing. Um, you know, as as a crochet artist, um, you know, we we like to think that we're gonna be crocheting until we drop. Um, but we do have to make sure we're taking care of our hands, exercising our hands properly, yep. giving them rest. Um, and it's nothing like while your hands are resting, you can still be making money off of crochet if you're in it for, for business. So absolutely. Um, so, um, yeah, so that, so it is, it's, it's a great way to generate income. It's a lot of work up front. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I'm not going to tell you, you're going to sit down and, you know, you guys are going to get off of this video or off of the replay and sit down and write a pattern in an hour and be done. That mask pattern took me all like all day, like all day on a Saturday. Wait, you said all day, and it took me like a week to do it. <laughs> to write to write the pattern. Yeah, but like yeah. that's all I did. Like I was like, don't talk to me, don't bother me. You know, I put the mute. You know, I had a movie on, and the kids were doing something else, and I was like, don't don't bother me right now. You know, I'm counting, <laughs> I'm right. writing, <laughs> and, you know, and it took all day for me to write it initially. Now that doesn't mean going back and correcting it, going back and reworking it again. And then, you know, getting it in the nice formal, you know, format, you know, and triple and quadruple checking it. Cause I want it to be perfect, you know? Right. Um, so yeah, so it took all day to, to, to create the initial and that's on a small thing that's on, you know, on a mask or on that, that peach. Um, so doing something larger, um, takes, takes a lot longer, you know, doing a hat pattern takes a lot longer. Um, so yeah, uh, like, like this one, for example, I, you know, I love this one. This is comfortable. Um, but I, I didn't write a pattern for it because I just, I was winging it, you know? And I was just making sure it fit as I went along. And I was like, this is great. Cool. But there won't be a pattern for this one anytime soon. Because I just didn't feel like taking the time to do it. I was just in a creative mode and wanted to just create. So, right. um, yeah, Lawana says she can freestyle, but writing a pattern takes skill. Absolutely. Exactly um, where I, I'm at. Yeah, I can freestyle a lot. I can look at something and make it. I didn't even realize I had that skill until one day I just did it. But to write it in a pattern, to have someone else follow it, mm -hmm. it is different. It's way so, different. So the first thing that I would suggest that you do is um, to take a look at a pattern that you have used and mm -hmm. think about what you like about it. So that when you're writing a pattern, you'll make sure to include those elements. Did you like the way that the materials were listed or did, or did you not like it? Right. Um, did you like the fact that it was all on one page or it was, you know, five pages or it was 20 pages, you know? Um, you know, what are the things that you enjoyed about, enjoy about patterns that you have used? Okay. Do you like to have all of the words written out or do you prefer abbreviations? Do you prefer written pattern versus a pattern? Uh, um, excuse me, the charts. I, I just, I don't like the charts and graphs because I look at the little symbols and it, it doesn't translate in my mind immediately. I need it to say SC for a single crochet. Right. I don't need a little 
<laughs> like, what am I doing? What is that? <laughs> that's just me. Some people prefer the charts because, you know, in their mind, they see those little tick marks and they're like, oh, okay, cool. Single, 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 double, single, double, you know, and I, yeah. I it takes me a minute to translate that. So I don't, I, I think don't, it's not for me, maybe because I do graph and chart, um, graph. Mm, so for me, I can get it. I understand, but yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, everybody's different. So decide yeah. what works best for you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So that so that would be the first thing is to to take a look at patterns that you have um, used. Now we don't want to plagiarize, right? Because once you start writing this pattern, you're going to understand how much work this person has put into it. Yep. Um, and so you know we don't want to plagiarize. It's not a good thing to do anyway. But you can take a look at the elements in a pattern that someone else has done. To, to pick out the things that you like and you don't like, but you have to make it your own, okay? Um, so the first, the next thing that I would say um, is really important to do, and I'm gonna share my screen again, give me one second, mm -hmm. um, is to become familiar with um, the Craft Yarn Council. Okay. Yarn Council. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is not a paid advertisement in any way. They have not asked me to share this information. This is just because this is a resource that has been very helpful to me. Um, and there is a lot of information here. So the the main thing that you want to pay attention to when you go to the website is craft craftyarncouncil.com. Um, is the standards. So if you see here um, in their main menu, um, standards, there's general, there's crochet, and then there's knit. Um, and so let's see if we can do whoop, general. Um, this talks about standards and guidelines for crocheting and knitting. And so this is like the prim the primary resource or the premier resource for um, all things and standards for abbreviations, patterns, sizing, et cetera. So nice little paragraph here on the left. I don't know that I've ever read it. I go right over here to the right. So you see all of these things here on the right? Mm -hmm. These are all links. And okay. so the first one you want to start with is your crochet abbreviations. Now, a lot of these we already know, but if you're beginning in, in the crochet world, um, some of these you may not know at all. Um, first time I saw HD2 TOG, I, I, I wonder what in the world someone was trying to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What hieroglyphics are these? Uh, <laughs> and it means half double crochet, two stitches together. Mm -hmm. so I was like, oh, okay. So that's a, a simple way to abbreviate using two half double crochet stitches within, you know, the same previous stitch. So, okay, that makes sense. Um, and BPHDC, again, are we talking about blood pressure? What are we talking about? EPA. Back oh, back post. <laughs> right. Back post. Back post. Oh. Right. I can't even so, see it, but I, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, maybe I need to make this. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Hold on. Okay. Is that a little bit better? I, I can see with the glasses. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blind. <laughs> okay. All right. So ho hopefully this is a little bit back bigger for everyone else. Um, so this gives you just about every, um, you know, uh, abbreviation and these are the standards, right? So mm -hmm. you should, if you go to a crochet pattern and it says PM, you should be able to understand that that means place marker, mm -hmm. right? Take your stitch marker and place it there right? You should be able to go to any pattern and pick it up. And where you see CSC, that means single crochet, right? Mm -hmm. So if you go in and you see a, an abbreviation that you aren't familiar with, right? 
like YOH, okay, you can come here and look this up and it says, oh, that's for yarn over the hook. I never saw that one. Yeah. I mean, because typically we don't, if you're writing a pattern, you're not necessarily saying to yarn over all, you know, each time, right? Because we know that when you make a single crochet, you know, you yarn over once. If you're doing a double crochet, you yarn over twice, you know, whatever, yeah. right? Um, but there may be an instance where you need to specify that. And if you have to do so multiple times within your pattern, instead of typing it out the whole time, you can YOH it. But yarn over is not the same as yarn over hook. Well, it. <laughs> that's a good question. That's a good question, right? Because these are crochet terms. So, yeah. I, to me, I I would read it the same. Okay. But that's, that's a good question for the Craft Yarn Council. Maybe I need to email them and ask them that. Yeah, I thought it was yarn over. Period. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> well, there we go. Right. Um, but here, EDC, extended double crochet. So you get the point, right? You can be yeah. reading a pattern and there are things that just don't make sense. You can come up here to the crochet abbreviations master list on the Craft Yarn Council. And this is this is public. I'm not logged in. You can you can become a member. You can log in, but you don't need to log in. This is free for everybody. And you can see that. Now, the next thing is that there are terms and common measurements. So these are other things that you want to use. So when you're repeating your instructions, mm -hmm. you want to make sure you use an asterisk because that's what everybody is going to look for because that's your standard. And if there are two asterisks, that means everything that's in between those asterisks, you repeat. Okay. That's Does that good make sense? Yeah, I didn't know that this was there. I, I just did it through common knowledge of just reading patterns, but this is really good to know. Right, right. But yeah, but if you all of a sudden, you know, you're reading a pattern that's new to you and it says, you know, FLO, are you going to know what that means? I didn't know what it meant. I don't know. <laughs> flow, flow what? Where are we flowing? <laughs> I, don't, I don't, you know, what are we doing? Okay, so that's front loop only. Okay, cool. So this is a good resource for me. Um, you know, you've got, you know, how people use the, the difference between using brackets or parentheses um, or, or braces. So it just depends on how they're used. And then, of course, your measurements. And if you're doing Tunisian crochet, then there's some additional um, Tunisian abbreviations that are available as well. Okay. All right. Now, we were talking about the difference between U.S. and U.K., yeah. They break it down for you here also, okay? So in U.S. and Canada, when you say slip stitch, you should be abbreviating it S-L-S-T, but U.K. will abbreviate it S-S. Now, this is where it gets tricky, and this is where your projects end up at looking crazy. Yeah, the monster hat. <laughs> right. When, you say, when we say single crochet, in U.K., they say double crochet. Because there are two loops on the hook at a certain point, right? But we're saying yeah. single crochet, we only yarn over once, right? So that's where you can get into an issue because if you are doing a UK pattern and it says double crochet and you do what we in the US think is a double crochet, it's going to be twice as twice as tall. Right. Right? Um. So same thing here. Oh, look, here we go. Here's an answer. US, we say yarn over. UK, they say yarn over hook. Oh, it's the UK and Canada people who say there that. There we go. That's okay. the difference. Right? They answered okay. the question. They answered the question. See? I didn't even know that. But you see how <laughs> invaluable this can be. Um, so I highly recommend this bookmarking this in your browser. And it's easy to look at on your phone, too. Bookmark it. Um, we don't have to go through all of these, but we'll just look at a couple of other uh, crochet uh, items. So there's mm -hmm. the crochet chart symbols. So again, this is where my brain goes. All right, we got mm -hmm. hieroglyphics 
I need the Rosetta Stone to translate <laughs> because my brain doesn't do it automatically. You know, so uh, my brain just doesn't work with that. This is a half double crochet that looks like a T. And then right. a T with a line through it is a double crochet. I, I, I would have to have this in front of me when working through a charted pattern. <laughs> right? Because that, they, you know, they're real pretty. Um, they're pretty. <laughs> <laughs> they are. <laughs> they are. I mean, because when you when you've got a nice pattern, um, you know, and and you've got all these symbols, it actually to me looks very pretty, very artistic. Yeah. I just can't translate it into working into a stitch. That's just my thing. Um, and then there is a you can download the PDF. So a lot of times I'll have links where you can download this stuff. Nice, nice. Um, tip number. I don't know, F or six, whatever we're on at this point. Um, <laughs> crochet patterns and how to read them. Now, this is great because if you can get with this on how to read a crochet pattern, it's going to help you on how to write a crochet pattern. Right. So you've got a little introduction here. You've got your basic abbreviations, basic terms, right? Those are things that are that you want to put at the beginning of your pattern um, because you want to assume, I like to assume that whoever's picking up my pattern may be looking at these things for the first time. So I right. will as much of this at the beginning as possible, especially on my easy patterns, right? Okay. Um, and then this one goes through a whole set of, you know, how to get started, what your stitches look like. So there's some great illustrations here. Um, when the pattern says something like um, a single chain in the second chain from the hook and in each chain across, it gives you arrows pointing to what that means, where that is, right? We talked about turning chains, working in a double crochet. So there's a lot here, right? They go into parentheses, asterisks, and brackets, what that looks like, right? So we were talking about the two asterisks, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at this section here, right? Row three, double crochet in the next three stitches, semicolon, mm -hmm. and then you've got your asterisk. But there's a whole lot in between those two asterisks. So chain one, skip the next stitch, double chain, double, oh, I'm sorry, double crochet in the next stitch. Okay. Now, this is going to say repeat from one asterisk to the other across the whole row. Or sometimes it'll say re um, repeat six times. Uh-huh. Right? So that means six times you need to do all of this. Right. Not just chain one. Not just the skip the stitch, but the whole thing. Chain one, skip, double chain, double crochet. Chain one, skip, double crochet. So that's how, you know, it explains how to use your, your single and your double asterisks. Okay. So this really goes into how to read a pattern and it will help you when you're writing a pattern to make it in a way that others can read it. Does that make sense? Yep. It makes a lot of sense. I didn't even know this was on there. Mm -hmm. All on one site. Because I would look it up, but it would be different sites of people, blogs and stuff. I didn't know yes. that Craft Yarn Council had it. Oh, yes. Right here on the, all of these links right here are invaluable. So if, you, if you're knitting, so I think we got a couple of knitters hanging out in the audience, which is cool. Absolutely. Our knitters. Yeah, yeah. Um, same thing. You've got knitting abbreviations here. You've got your knitting chart your knit chart symbols, which are very different, right? And then knitting how to read a pattern um, because they're, they're, they're very different um, across the, 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 uh, the crafts. Um, but now you want to then, th from that point where you get down to, um, after you get past your crochet and your knitting, a lot of this stuff is standards that will help you. If you are going to be doing, uh, if you want to talk about your uh, yarn, this talks about wrap per inch. That tells you the weight of your yarn. 
So, Shauna, have you ever done this to figure out the weight of a yarn that doesn't have it written down? Absolutely not. Okay. So let's say <laughs> Aunt Susie, you know, gifted you some yarn that she's had in her stash for, you know, 10 years. Yeah, I got a lot of Aunt Susie stuff. And there are no labels on it because they all I have a lot of. Yeah. Okay. So what you do is you can take a pencil <clears throat> and you want to wrap your yarn around the pencil. Mm -hmm. and make sure that it's, you know, that it's kind of tight. You don't want to, you know, wrap it too tightly, but just make sure that you wrap it around the pencil and, and push it, you know, so that it's touching. And within an inch, how many wraps are in an inch? Oh. The weight of your yarn. So if you wrap your yarn around a pencil, let me see if I can give an a example real quick. Um, let's see. Let me stop sharing. Okay, so let's find a pencil. Uh-huh. A ruler. Okay. You got a good ruler. And okay. And I got some yarn scraps. All okay. right. So I already know what this is because this is my standard yarn that I play around with and it's yellow on a yellow pencil. So let me get a different color. Hold on. Um, oh, here we go. All right, here's some blue. Okay, so what you're gonna do, you're gonna take your pencil and you're gonna wrap and then you're just gonna kind of slide it together. Oh, okay. Just keep wrapping. And you see, I'm not pulling it too tight, right? You just wanna wrap it, slide it together. Okay. And you need you need about an inch inch worth of uh you need an inch worth of yarn on there. Okay. So well that's an alarm. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it's reminding me to do, but it's an alarm. Okay, so once you've got your yarn wrapped on your pencil, sorry. Uh-oh, here we go. Okay. There you go. Once you've got your yarn wrapped on your pencil, then you're going to take your ruler mm -hmm. and measure it, right? So it's a little hard to, it's the best way to show this. Here we go. Okay. So within an inch, that's pretty much about, that's, that's about an inch, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Now I can count how many I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So I have seventeen rounds or wraps within that inch. And so what that means when I go back to the Craft Yarn Council site um, and take a look, um, seventeen um, wraps per inch is going to be about a fine or a size two uh, weight yarn. Okay. So that is how you can determine um, what weight, an approximate weight, um, let me pull it back up, your yarn is. There we go. I never knew that. Yeah. I never knew you could do that. Yep. So that's going to give you- I do the field test. I you do the what? The field test. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, um, but this will tell you that. Um, project levels, they talk about how to, how to, how to tell if the project or the pattern that you are um, creating, excuse me, is, you know, basic, easy, intermediate, or complex. Those are good to, to put on your pattern. And then you can download those symbols and copy and paste them right into your pattern. It's free. They make oh, it. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, yeah, so you can click on downloadable symbols, and oh, this is all of these. Yeah. Yep, in an EPS or a JPEG format that you can include in your pattern, so you don't have to worry about plagiarism. This is a standard, and it is provided to you by the Craft Yard Council. You are dropping some knowledge. Boom. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> okay. Now, 
so so this is this is stuff that is is helpful for all patterns. The, the next thing is if you're going to start you know measuring for uh, garments um, that need to be sized, then you have a whole set of industry standards uh, where you start talking about um, if negative ease, positive ease, loose fit, oversized fit, um, how to measure for fit. All of this information is here, right? Tells you where to measure, how, you know, what to measure. Um, all of that's here. And then you've got your size charts by um, age grouping, right? What? Group. This is all <laughs> I it's didn't know it was here. on here. Do you understand you have to what I have to go you. through? I know. I, I know. Trust me, I know. So if you're doing a, a, a toddler's sweater, right? Or you know, or a 24 month old, the average, right? Chest, you would want to do 20 inches. I need two T. Like seriously. Like right. this is like something I need for something I'm doing this week. Okay, so two T. You want to look at child or youth sizes, right? Size two. Uh huh. Twenty one inches for the chest, the center back. Now remember, okay, center back. Well, what does that mean? Let's go back here to your standard body measurements and see what that means for center back. Center back, neck to wrist. Okay, or chest. So when it says a 20 inch chest, that's going to be from one, oops, from side to side. It's mm -hmm. not all the, yeah, it, yeah, it's around the fullest part of the chest. So it's all the way around the body, but at the, at this part of the chest. Okay. Okay. So th this, this will walk you through, you know, um, by size. So we want to go into women's size charts. Um, so again, we go into descriptions as terms of extra small, medium, large, extra large, but it also gives you inches. Um, because as we know, we can go to a store and buy an extra large garment from one store and buy an extra large from another store or even the same store. And they started in my life. Yep. Hello. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and with us fluffy girls, I'm a fluffy girl. So yes. if it's a 2X or a 3X, depends on where I'm buying it. You know, if it's cut short, slim or not, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so this is good because it gives you measurements. It uh, gives you the inches and the centimeters if you want to use those. Okay. All right. Um, so you've got baby size chart, child and youth, women's size, men's size. Um, head circumference. Okay. So the last hat that I did, um, was the, uh, the busy beanie, right? Because, yeah. you know, we stay busy, so we need a quick beanie and mm -hmm. we just crocheted it as a, um, as a rectangle and then sewed it together. So I included a chart that talked about, you know, the sizes because, Somebody might might have wanted to do a busy beanie for a toddler, right? You're getting ready to make a, a size 2T for somebody. You want to do a quick hat to go with it. Mm -hmm. You can do a toddler's. The circumference is 16, you know, by 18, 16 to 18. So you want to crochet it 16 to 18 inches, you know, wide. So mm -hmm. and there you go. You have a quick and easy hat. So this is where I found the measurements for that busy beanie hat pattern. You want to do socks or slippers. You've got your foot size charts and then you've got hand size charts. And again, these are standard. So, you know, could be larger, could be smaller, you know, and your wording in your pattern tells you if it's, you know, you want to state, you know, may fit, you know, most one size fits all one size fits most or your specific sizes, but I would also include the inches. So if you want to say it's a woman's size large glove, you can then say with a hand circumference of eight inches. And I was wondering how the heck do these people even know the circumference or the inches? I'm like, you making this up or something? No, <laughs> these are these are your fashion industry standards. Oh, I just knew 
people were just no. me. So I used to work at Coach part time um, in another life, and so we, you know, glove sizes. You know, people were like, "Oh, I don't know what my glove size is," and I'm like, "Well, do you need a five or do you need an eight? They're like, "I, I don't know what." You know, so <laughs> the, <laughs> these are that? right. These are things, and so we have charts for those. Um, and so that gives you, but, you know, again, you could have a woman who is very petite and a, and a seven inch circumference could be, you know, fairly large for her. So then you might want to do, you know, a child size glove just depends. Right. So, or someone who's got very large hands and he's got an 11 inch, you know, hand circumference. Yeah. Mm, my kind of man. Hello. Um, <laughs> then you want to go ahead and give him an extra large glove. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so this will help you with the standards and whether you need to make adjustments. Um, yarn weight system, we talked about that a little bit when we talked about wraps per inch. Um, I feel like that should be together, but they, they are separate, but this will give you as much detail as you can find about a type of yarn. So for example, um, my DK weight is a size three, which can also be called light worsted. It gives you an average knit gauge, um, a recommended needle size, uh, for that particular gauge. And again, that's a four inch. Whenever somebody says gauge and they don't say, you know, how many inches automatically assume within a four inch square, right? Mm -hmm. um, needle size US um, crochet gauge. It'll tell you the crochet gauge, recommended crochet hook size. Okay. Um, so this gives you all of that. Um, if you need it in Spanish, it is available in Espanol. Wow, they covered all bases. If you need it en français, it's available en français. Um, schematics, this tells you how to write a schematic or you know, gives you an example of a garment schematic. Um, hooks and needles. If you want to understand hooks and needles, what size to recommend and why, you've got all of that here. Um, let's see. Downloadable symbols. We talked, we showed that before. Mm -hmm. um, yarn label information. This gives you how to read your yarn labels, what to look at um, when you're reading a, a yarn label. Uh, your care symbols, right? Um, because I don't know what this little bucket with two dots is. Yeah. I have no idea. I this means so. you can wash it warm. <laughs> it has three dots, you can wash it hot. <laughs> okay. It has a hand going into the bucket, that means hand wash. I was like, oh, this is great because I have up to put oh, so this is for if we don't if we see those little symbols on the yarn, we we'll know what it is. You can also use these in your pattern. Okay. So if you if you wish, you can use them, you know, in your pattern to describe how to treat the garment once it is done. So for example, if you do a uh toddler uh sweater in acrylic yarn, right? You can probably say machine wash warm, most likely. Mm -hmm. Um, but then I would say, do not iron, right? Because it's acrylic, it's going to melt. Don't mm -hmm. touch that with I'm iron. I'm doing a shaggy one too. Right. So well, for that, you want to hand wash because you don't want the yarn to split, you know, with the shag. Yeah. So you can put hand wash, do not iron, do not dry clean, um, you know. Do not order. <laughs> <laughs> Call somebody else. <laughs> right. So, you know, so this gives you that as well. So you can, you know, if you want to do that, you can absolutely do that. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot. You've got a FAQ section. Um, can anyone use the craft yarn council symbols? Yes. Right? Everything that I've shown you here is public site, it is available to you. They tell you what you can use, what you can't use. Right. Um, they do ask that you quote, you know, that you give them credit 
Um, and it's very simple. You can simply copy this and paste it into your, um, onto your pattern. Mm -hmm. um, and if you are embedding this in a website, then you've got your source code that you can use to embed that in your website. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So that was a whole lot. That was great information. You just dropped a whole lot of knowledge. Like, yeah, I didn't know that was up there. Like, I would literally go on Google and ask Google, and Google X stupid sometimes and right. give you all this information. You're like, that's you're like not, okay, I didn't ask that. I didn't ask for that. Right. That's, what I asked for. that's everything in one location. Yes. Oh. So bookmark that craft yarn council. Quick side mm -hmm. note if you wish to become a crochet instructor, you can take a course and get certified through them to teach crochet classes. Yeah, someone just said that they took classes and they're certified. Um, yes. But I tried to do it and it, it's like a you have to go there and there was one in New York and I just no, missed it. No, 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 no. You can do no. it online. You do not have to be there in person. Absolutely Word. not. Um, did you do it? So at one point I decided I was going to give it a try okay. um, and I will, con I will finish it, but I started yarn dye. So this at the beginning of, uh, <laughs> actually right before quarantine started fall of 2019, I decided that I wanted to, um, become an instructor. This is okay. it. You pay and you down, you can, you download everything and PDF. And it gives you, it's the certified instructor program, um, level one, and you can do crochet level two. You can do knit level one, knit level two. Um, and this walks you through, this This is the whole program. And then these are all of your standards and everything. So okay. you don't have to do this in person. You pay, you download it, you get assigned a mentor, um, and w as you work through everything, they tell you how to submit it, how it will be reviewed and graded. Um, and then once you pass it all, boom. You so it must not have been through them. I went to then. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is, this is all you can all start okay. it right online. Okay. Yeah, that's that's six, good. Months, six months to finish it, um, oh, okay. to finish each level. So you get, you have time to do it. Um, I I'm see Shay put, put down uh, the link. So you guys make sure you you use that. Um, so that's a quick side note. Um, you don't have to do that to write patterns. You don't have to do that to have access to all of the things that, you know, we just went through. Um, all of that's free and you don't have to be certified to use those things. So you can start writing a pattern, you know, tonight, today, tomorrow. Um, and you don't have to, to pay to be certified. Um, I'm going to do it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow. I got a pattern I'm going to write tomorrow. But yes. my other question is, how do you know what to price? How to price your pattern? Yeah, so let me, let me, <laughs> let me explain. Okay. The reason why I'm asking, because any other time I just do what I want to do. But... Mm -hmm. Um, I'm asking because there are certain patterns that I will purchase from people. And I think $5 is good for like maybe a hat pattern or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then you have some patterns that are like $15, $17, $12. And you're looking at the pattern and you're like, I could do this myself. What the heck I buy this for? And sometimes I just purchase patterns just to support some people. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes I do that, but I'm not, I, I'm so Shauna, so diva-ish that I feel like I'm going to support somebody, mm -hmm. but I want to make sure that I'm getting what it, what it's worth as well. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm supporting you, I want to make sure like, you know, I would support you. I, well, I put your pattern before I even met you and I love the pattern before right, I even right, met you, right. but to buy someone else pattern just to support them. And I don't like the pattern mm -hmm. or I can't understand the pattern. Mm -hmm. I don't want to end up in that situation. So I low, I, I give myself low prices. 
And I don't know if that's a great idea or what, but I do think that um, some people need some lessons on how to how write to, how to write a pattern before they charge seventeen, eighteen dollars. I, yes, I agree. So let's let's talk a little bit about that, right? So I can't see myself doing fifteen dollars for a pattern, right? So there are some people that do. Now, if I pay fifteen dollars for a pattern, it needs to be pristine. I I don't mind, you know. I I'll drop five dollars on a pattern in a minute, you know. Um, either just to support the person, you know. Yeah. Cause they've just started, they just released one. It's new. I like it. And I'm adding it to my never ending pile of patterns that I want to work at some point <laughs> in life. Um, and, um, but if it's $15, then I would expect that yeah, I, no typos, no issues, no problems. Like it should flow like water. I need all the graphics, all the pictures, you know, like I, I want it to be like a, a book that I could like show off on my coffee table. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's my thought. Um, and I haven't bought any $15 patterns. I remember having um, a discussion with a designer who was uh, creating a uh, sweater pattern and was debating if, he should sell it for seven dollars. And I was like, hell yeah. It should be more than that. Because what I was looking at was beautiful, not just the the item itself, but the pattern was beautiful. Oh wow. Meaning like the 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 pictures of the finished item, you yeah. know, progress pictures. Like it was beautiful. And I thought, well, I would pay ten dollars for it, you know, personally. Um, because I could tell the care that person had put in. There was commentary that was very, um, um, not flowery, but very descriptive, you know, and this is why I created this and why I use the color. Aww. It's like, oh, this is, <laughs> I'm not going to ever knit this because I don't knit, but I just want to buy it for $10 because it's a, a work of art itself, you know? Yeah. Um, when I, my first one, that one I showed you, the perfect peach, this less than perfect pattern. Um, I think I charged three fifty for that because I was like, mm, "This is my first one. I'm just gonna do three dollars and fifty cents. See what happens." Now, when I rewrite it, um, I will probably still charge three fifty because, in my mind, um, it's for a small item. Um, it's not a lot. It will probably take maybe three pages. Um, once I, you know, reconstruct it, <laughs> rewrite it, maybe mm -hmm. take three, maybe four, just to allow for some, you know, images. Um, and, but it, but it's for a small item. So me personally, I feel like the larger the item, the more detailed the instructions, the more detailed the pattern, you know, the, the more you would pay for it. Um, it surprises me that some of the garments that people publish, they're only, you know, charging $5 for the pattern. I'm like, yeah, I, I do sure. see that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, um, you know, I, I, I don't blink twice about paying five to $7 for a pattern. If I want yeah. it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy it. I, like yeah. that's not going to stop me. A seven dollar pattern is not going to stop me. Now, if I get it and it's crap, then I'll probably email for help, you know, or reach out as I'm doing it. Um, and I've had that happen to me. I've had someone buy, you know, my pattern after I had written it, and you know, it's been out there, and other people have used it, and somebody came back and was like, you know, if you kind of rewrote line number so and so, it might make it flow a little easier. You might want to look at the wording on this and then you got a typo there. And I was like, oh, I appreciate you. Thank you. Um, but the important thing to keep in mind, you're going to do a $15 pattern. I would expect you to have had testers, not just you and one other person, but like multiple testers. And I would also expect it to have been tech edited. So have you heard of tech editing? No. 
Okay. So tech editing is when you have someone who is a professional um, crocheter or knitter or, you know, has been in the industry for a while. Um, and let me see if I can uh, um, pull this up. Um, and, and they, it is their job to um, go through and read your pattern, work your pattern, correct your pattern. Um, and I may not, hold on, I had it pulled up earlier and I apologize. Give me one second. Okay, this is a good one. So I'm gonna share this one also. This lady, um, Ed Edie Ekman, she is actually a part of the Craft Yarn Council. Again, I promise you, they haven't paid me for this. It's just that it's, they are a great resource, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I, the, right, the reason I recognize her name is because she is the person that I was assigned to um, when I started the- uh, Oh, the I know who she is. Instructor program. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So she is a tech editor. She is a technical editor. Um, you can look up, look her up on her website. Uh, and that's why I'm confident in kind of showing this without having read through it first. Um, just because I see her name everywhere in, you know, a lot of play, places that um, I, you know, go for crochet stuff. Um, but she uh, gives you what she does. She offers services on technical editing. Um, she gives you an idea of what the workflow looks like. You can submit your information to her here um, and she will tech for you. Now, um, prices. So she charges, let's see, as of November, 2020, she charges $42 per hour for knitting and crochet technical editing and chart schematic illustration. She keeps careful time records um, using an online timer um, included during her phone calls consultations. She doesn't charge you at the beginning when negotiating um, and then she will provide you with timesheets. That's what you wanna see from a technical editor. Okay. Okay, so it can be expensive. Um, you know, $42 an hour and in anything to sneeze at, right? Right. So if you think about that, if you're going to pay her $42 an hour to tech edit your pattern, then you need to recoup that cost. Yeah, I know someone who used, I didn't know it was called a tech edit to her, mm -hmm. but she did tell me that she do use someone and pay good money to make sure her patterns are good. Right. I mean, so for one hour worth of that person's time, and it's going to take them more than an hour to do a good job with your pattern, you've got to sell six patterns to break even. Right. Right. So, you know, you want to make sure this is a pattern that you feel comfortable or confident that you're going to be able to sell quite a few of them, um, you know, which is not I'm not saying that to dissuade you, you know. So I don't, you know, because we, we do a lot of self-talk that's not good. It's like, I don't know if it's going to be that good, you know, but once you put it through that tech editing process, it's going to be that good. Mm -hmm. So, you know, go ahead and do that. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's pricey, but it's worth it. And so, you know, when you get a garment um, and it's been tech edited, it should fit. If you follow yeah. that, you know. Other things can go wrong, but it shouldn't be a problem in the pattern writing. Right. Um, so a $15 pattern, I expect that it would have been tech edited. It would have been tested and retested and tested again. Um, I shouldn't, I, I would expect not to see any mistakes in the, in the pattern. Now, if I don't follow the instructions, it's a whole nother thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. But I, I bought five, I paid for a um 
a, a cardigan, um, $5. And it was, you know, supposed to be um, adjustable by size. And I followed the instructions to make it my size because it was written, I think, for a large and I needed it to be a 2X. And I followed the instructions. And the problem was the instructions did not increase the back of the sweater. What the instructions had was um, for the front parts to add inches so it would, you know, cover the girls and my yeah. extra puffiness, but it did not increase across the back. So the problem is when I finished it and went to go put it on, it was tight. Uh, it fit across here, but the back was tight because, you know, the fluffiness is not just in the front. The fluffiness yeah. is all around, <laughs> right? I guess you didn't think about that part. So I was like, oh, this person didn't have this tech edited, right? Because they just added the inches here and not across the back. Yeah. Right? So you think about that, you know, if you go to put on an extra large sweater, sweatshirt, you know, it's going to be tight. Yeah. Now, if you add room here, you'll be walking around like this because the back is all tight. In the front. <laughs> <That's not possible. laughs> or the front's not adjusted and the back is loose and you, you know, right. So, <laughs> you know, so that was a little, that was disappointing, right? Because I spent a lot of time working on that. So now that's a, a garment that just doesn't leave the house. I just kind of put it on just to keep warm, but I don't really like it. <laughs> um, so for a $15 pattern, I would expect that's going to fit me perfectly. You know, I follow the instructions. Yeah. So, yeah. Nice. So do anyone have any other questions? I think you gave excellent information <laughs> and on point as always, and it will make me feel a little bit more comfortable, a, a lot more comfortable yeah. doing a pattern because I just went out on a limb based off of what I've read and what I've done so far. And yeah, I, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> no, I would say take your time. It's going to take time, right? Um, it's not going to be as quick as actually making the garment. It's going to take you longer to write the pattern than if you were just reading and making, right? So have patience. Um, when you are writing the pattern, you need to write down everything and you need to write it down while you're doing it. Do not crochet 10 rows and then sit down and try to write out what you just did. You, <laughs> right? Because the one row was, you know, 10 single crochets, and then the second row was, you know, a single crochet skip, a single crochet skip. I'm laughing because yeah. I did that. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, but then you end up missing stitches. I did that. You did. That's what right? the first two rows were that she had to correct me. <laughs> yes. Right. Because you're like, oh, I know what I did. So I did when that. I when you go sit down and you write it because you're feeling good and you write it and you're like, oh, well, crap. I left out some stitches in the rows, right? Um, <laughs> so, you know, so write it as you're doing it. Do not go beyond a row before you write that row down. Um, and, you know, you can do it on paper. You can do it. I actually do mine um, on my phone. So I'm sitting oh. down and because, you know, the, the pay, you know, the pencil rolls somewhere or whatever, but I always got my phone beside me. So I write my, I notes. always have a notebook by me. I don't know why, but I just yeah. do. It's whatever, whatever works for you. Yeah. Right. Um, but for me, this is what works. So I put, yeah. I, you know, I put my title and then I'll make sure I put my hook size and you know, what I did. And then I just start writing it out row by row. Um, and once I do that, then for me, I can then copy and paste that into my, like my pattern template. Right. So I use PowerPoint. I just like the way PowerPoint out works. Some people prefer word. Yeah. Prefer um, word. Yeah. But then I can copy and paste 
and then fix it up. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then be prepared to work it multiple times. So if you're making a hat, be prepared to make three hats. The first yeah, thing. and that's the that's my problem. I don't. The, I make the, maybe one, and then I may do the, the next one, and that's it. <laughs> well, I mean, I think as you progress in your pattern writing and your confidence and your you know, you you have testers that are doing it as well. If you end up doing it twice, you know, that's fine. I, but I think when you're starting, you know, to create it and write it and then to go back and follow your instructions and create a second one, you know, gift it to somebody, you know, save them up for Christmas gifts or something. Yeah. 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 But um, for me, you know, hats, I just switch it up and wear one, one Saturday and wear the next one the next Saturday, you know, do it in different right. colors. <laughs> so, um, tech editing is an option. Um, use your craft yarn council resources. Uh, what else? All right, I don't see any other questions. I don't um, think anyone have any questions because you covered so much. <laughs> I, it was more than I, what I thought I was going to cover, but um, there are a lot of good. It's a lot of good resources out there, but the best thing is to be able to have that one resource where you can find most of that information. I want. I wanted to. Well, see, I didn't know that there was one resource for all that information. I had no idea mm -hmm. whatsoever. But what I would do is go on Google and try to Google, you know, certain things. And it's not always a great thing to do because I never really get all of the information that I need or right. some information that I need to look up more information of. So the fact that all of that is in one website, I had no idea whatsoever. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a valuable. So... She says, is it rude to ask someone to rewrite their pattern? Well, it depends on how you ask. <laughs> you know. You know uh, you, you, listen, I mean, I'm going to be real. You know, you pop up in their DMs like, look, you need to rewrite this pattern. <laughs> but it's, I don't know what you're saying. So, yeah, that's a little rude. <laughs> but, and I'm not saying you would do that. I'm just being silly. Y'all know me. So, <laughs> but, um. No, I mean, like I said, I had one of my one of my um, consistent clients uh, bought one of my patterns and was like, mm, you know, the way you wrote this row it was confusing to me. So I, you know, can you go back and rewrite that row? And I, I looked at it and I read through it. And then you have to take it, you know, take into account like. Okay, that's that's one person. Now, if ten people tell you that, then you need to listen to all ten. Right. right. If, if it's one person, it couldn't just be that person's style. It just may not work for them. And right. I always make sure I put my email address um, at the end of the pattern for pattern help. Right. So if you have questions, you can email me and um, you can go back and, you know, I can go back and go, oh, OK, yeah, this is what you do. You know, I have one lady with the mask. She was like, it's too small for my husband. Um, you know, I need it to be a little bit bigger, you know got a wider face or whatever, I, you know, it's fine. I mean, cause again, it's one, five, one size fit most, or maybe hey, he had a beard. Up a hook? Huh? Wouldn't you go up a hook? Well, you, you, well, you could, but see, then if you go up a hook, you're adding extra spaces in between your stitches. So, you know, mine is made to be kind of tight stitches in that, in that mask, not enough to keep COVID out. I do recommend you, you is a cover, right? Yeah. But, you know, you if you go up a hook size, it, it will increase the size of the mask. But I didn't know if he needed it high, higher or wider. You know, like, what were we talking about? So we emailed back and forth and, um, you know, we were able to, I was able to give her some adjustments that she could try. Um, but yeah, keep keep in mind, if it's just one person, you know, Consider they could be telling you right. You know, if one person is like, um, you spell the T T H E R E, you know, and it's supposed to be T H E, then okay, you could listen to that one person, right? It was a typo. If 10 people tell you, then maybe you need to listen. All right, you made that face. What what was that? Because that happened. 
before. Okay. Somebody told me something I misspelled, and I'm like, okay, but you know what that word was. Mm-hmm. But you felt the need to go through the whole explanation because it wasn't just me, though. It was okay. in front of a lot of people that was said, like this kind of setting. I was talking, okay. and um, she wrote it in the comments um, about a pattern I did, uh, a graph. It was a graph. Sure. Yeah. So, so in that case, you know. Yeah, I I do think that there is a way to approach people. And I would and that's why I include an email address in on the pattern. I don't include a phone number and I don't say DM me and I don't say pop on my Saturday morning live and correct me live. Um, but you can email me and then then we can, you know, I'll email yeah. back. And if we need to have a phone conversation or do a video chat, like I'm willing to do that. Absolutely. You know, but if you come all of that for five dollars, though, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, some people get kind of needy. Yes, but you know, you're absolutely right because I have had a person who's like, "Okay, well, I need you to just make it with me, like step by step." Yes. I'm like, no, that's not how I operate, and I, I don't, I can't do that. I don't have the time to do that, and you can't afford my personal rate if I were to do that. So. You know, we'll need to find another solution. <laughs> um, yeah. But, but, um, but you know, if it's for one, you know, for one small thing, you know, I, I, I don't mind, right? Yeah. Someone here says, absolutely, mind your manners. Yeah. If you, if you, you approach me nicely, you know, someone, um, you know, someone's mentioned here about my yarn. Yes. Yeah, somebody was like, I want to buy your yarn. I can't find your your, your yarn. I don't know where the white yarn is. In the description. And I was like, um, okay, no problem. So I just sent her a screenshot, you know, that says, if you click here and you click here, you can get to the white yarn. And she's like, oh, tag. Uh, okay. And I'm like, that's nothing. Yeah, that's, that's nothing. simple. That's nothing. Yeah, that's simple. That that's I simple. can understand. But some people just don't you, mind their manners. <laughs> they do not. And, you know, you, you know how to handle it. And I try it. to be as nice as possible. Absolutely. I think I am. Absolutely. I think I'm really nice. But sometimes. That's a whole nother conversation. That's yeah. Nice. We'll that have, is. <laughs> look, we can, we'll have, you'll have to bring me back on and talk about um, uh, crafting conversation etiquette. <laughs> <laughs> It will be nobody on here. <laughs> <laughs> Which, what to say and what not to say. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they they looking at your yarn in the background yeah. too. So everything is in the description. Her yarn is the bomb. I have some. I'm actually the next pattern is gonna be with her yarn. Like it's it's so good. I smell everything. I don't know why. But. <laughs> <laughs> I have a habit of smelling everything, but um. So, and I, I don't know how how we're doing on time, but remember, I had asked you if I could do something. Can I do that now? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So. Before you say something, though, because <laughs> we started, we went right into this whole entire conversation. But I just want to say happy birthday. To my two moderators whose birthday is today. Oh. And that's Nat, Natalie, Nat, Nat, and Deisha. Their birthdays are today. Oh. So I just wanted to say happy, happy birthday. birthday to yes. you. Both of their happy birthdays. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday. I, I had for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I love it. More Aquarius in the house. The world always needs more Aquarians. <laughs> yeah, your birthday's coming up. Your birthday's yes, coming up. That's right. And Shanti just had one. I see she's in the yes. audience. So absolutely. Um, okay, so some fun stuff. I want to know. So I'm I I like giving away stuff. You know, I love gifting stuff because I like getting gifts too, right? I love it when I go to the mailbox and it's like, I just sent you something. Um but I just want to send you guys something. So I have two giveaways. Now, um, before y'all do anything, so this is what I'm going to give away. I'm going to give away two sets of minis. So this is the um, Air DK Pima Cotton. 
Uh, this mm. one is um, sort of citrus, right? Um, and then this one is definitely citrus, right? <laughs> <laughs> sort of citrus. So I'm going to give away these. Um, so there's a catch. Um, the first two people who raise their hand and say that they will use these to try to write a complete or portion of a pattern. Give me the raised hand emoji and I will send this to you. Now, this is about 100 grams, 218 yards. So it's not um, it's not a whole lot, um, but it's enough to maybe get you started on a hat or what have you. So I need a, a raised hand emoji. Raise hand oh, emoji. Raise hands. You can't put the emoji with the raised hand? Yeah, you can. Yeah, I can. actually saw so so one. Did it. There we go. You got right. one. Yeah. Yarn yeah. <laughs> Sage, Luana, she got the first one. Now, A, she got the second one. All right. See, look at y'all. <laughs> y'all found it. Huh? <laughs> okay. So, listen, you guys do me a favor. DM me. Um, on Instagram. I think you both are on Instagram um, at Busy Peach. Um, send me your address, your full name and your address, so I can drop these to you in the mail. They're already packaged and ready to go. So if you send that tonight, I'll put them in the mail tonight. So let me know. So that was. Uh, you gonna do a pattern? Luana and now. You gotta Nathan. do a pattern. Yeah. So you gotta, you gotta start. You gotta start. I want you to use these to start a pattern. You have to do a pattern. I'm it's net net. Yeah, we're, we're gonna come back and see what you got. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, net net. You gotta do a pattern. <laughs> so yes. Um, okay, so that's a cute little giveaway. So something to get you going, get you started. But I encourage you. She said, "Lord help me," but I am going to try. Luana, you can Aww. do. It. You can do it. Absolutely. You can do it. Um, <laughs> and it doesn't have to be anything complicated. And if, if you ask nicely, I might give you a little tip or two. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so that's, um, I think. Thank you. I appreciate you. You, <laughs> you dropped so much knowledge on us. That was so cool. Cause um, I should have had you on like before but I did my hat. That would have been. Better. No, it's all good. You know I want to see it now. So look, I'm a look, and I'm gonna message you. Um, I'm gonna need you to change this in your pattern. <laughs> yeah, I already got Gail. She needs to be on me on one way and you on the other way. But that's okay because my other patterns after that is gonna be on and popping. Yes, it's but gonna be on and popping. So, and then just real quick. So Shanti, she put, if I can do it, you can do it. Absolutely. Shanti just released a pattern um, this week. It is a beautiful, yeah. gorgeous knitted shawl. Um, and so go check it out. Take a look, you know, support her on that. But this is the thing. There's so many of us out here that love to pattern test. Um you know, your tech editor, you do want to find a professional that's got years in experience before you pay them to do that. But we have a community, folks that come on here and 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 watch Diva, you know, faithfully, you know, next time you have a pattern that you're trying to put out. So look, I need like five people to test it. And I'm, I guarantee you, you'll have people in the audience raising their hands saying, oh yeah, absolutely. Because they want to be first to see it. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know, be in the know, right? And then when you release it, they like, bam, here are my pictures. This is what I did. Absolutely. Because you could see earlier, um, I don't know if you saw earlier go by, but when I was talking about the uh, Empower People um, bandana, Yolanda was like, yes, I tested it. She was like, I was one yes. of those tested. So you kind of get bragging rights, you know? So it's yeah. cool. So we have a huge um, community. Everybody out here loves doing stuff and we're supporting each other. So when you guys are, you know, working on your patterns and creating them, reach out to the community, you know, put a post on Facebook, um, do a call and a quick um, advert here on YouTube. Um, put something in your stories on um, uh, Instagram to say, hey, looking for pattern testers. Go from there. So, 
that word. I had the link to her website, but it's coming up not found. Uh oh, who's I website? put it in the um in the chat. Oh it yeah, should, be, be sure. I don't know why it didn't come up, but uh, put it in there. It should come up now. Yeah, I don't know why. It. Let's make sure. Hold on now. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. Okay, well, it's coming up. It's coming it's, up. It's there. Okay, okay. Yeah. good. It's there. Okay. You can find me. <laughs> like, I, I'm like, I, mean, I, I, sure. I thought I did this. I tried. I tried. Yeah, no slash at the end. You can just put in busypeach.com or www.busypeach.com. You don't have to put a whole lot of extras, et cetera. So, um, Diva, do you have knit crochet or Tunisian crochet followers? Both. All of Both. those, right? I have them all because we're actually about to do a Tunisian cow. A Tunisian mm. crochet along, and that's gonna start next on the 16th, which is next week. Mm. We're um doing a Tunisian, it's gonna be a fiber artist, it's gonna be for yourself. So you could do a pillow or you mm. could do a um a, a tote bag, and we're gonna do the same exact design, but it's gonna be for all fiber artists, okay. And um we're also teaching how to do the Tunisian. So if you don't know how to do mm -hmm. a graph and Tunisian, we're going to teach it as well as crocheting together. That way we all would understand how to do it, how I change my colors. And, and um, if I have a, 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 a role that is very tedious mm -hmm. and you want to know how to do it, we're all going to be on the same exact page anyway. So we all can follow the same exact thing. Right. The, um, I'm going to show what the graph is this week, by the end of this week. And I'm going to put more flyers out there. I didn't, I put it on Facebook, but I didn't really put it in Instagram yet because okay. I wanted to put what the picture is first, but cool. yeah, we're going to do that. And it's $5. It's only $5 because you get to keep the, the graph. Mm -hmm. It's a graph. And you can make a pillow or a um, tote bag. It's whatever you want. Nice, nice. So question, because she was asking, do you have knit? So do you have knitters that follow you that know how to do color work and use your graphs? I, I'm i pretty sure I know some knitters, that, yeah. but I don't know offhand if they, I only know um, Shanti and um, Kamora. Mm -hmm. Kamara mm -hmm. Knits and Fran, but I don't know. I wonder. That that might be, you know, ideas keep popping up. But like to have a, someone who knits yeah. and is used to doing color changes and knitting, yeah. use one of your um, pattern, one of your graph scans. I think Fran is doing the Betty Boop one. She's going to knit that, I think. Oh, is she? I, I could have sworn she was gonna come to the dark side and crochet. I don't mm -hmm. think she wanna do that. <laughs> she asked me about knitting. Look, I don't know if she's listening. I don't think she wanna do that. She I asked me about knitting. She yeah. I she don't tell her I said that, y'all. Listen. <laughs> no, I don't think she wanna come over <laughs> to the dark side. But I do want to go over to that side every now and then because it's, it's so nice. I love knitting. I love how mm -hmm. it looks. It's gorgeous. Yeah, I, I love how it looks too. I, I just don't mm -hmm. to do it. It's very tedious and it takes a long time. Oh my yeah. gosh! Oh, Cheryl, I see Cheryl over there thinking about. It. She said, "I've never tried to knit a graph game," but then she said, "Hmm." Well, Cheryl, you just have to let us know how it goes. Yes, actually, you could use one of the um the test ones. I have a a bunch of free test ones in Grafkin University, which will be in my blog soon. I'm still trying to. Girl, I think you should. I think you should try it and let us know how. Yeah, it it's a, like some are like 15 by 15, 20 by 20. They're cool. really small. Small. You could try it. I didn't even know you know how to knit. See, I see what I'm doing. Say yes, I have them. Oh, what the girl make happen? Do it, like Shanti said. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Yes, and let me see because I would love to see yes. how it comes out. No, because that would be huge. That would open up a whole new audience for you. Cheryl, talk to me, boo. Talk to me. <laughs> well, I'll try. She said, "I'll try one." Yes. Okay. Yes. Talk. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. Talk. Well, you need Shauna to follow up with Cheryl. Absolutely, because okay. we do Tunisian and we do 
C2C, we do regular crochet. People so knit colors. is next, yeah. yeah. And people do that with knit. They knit all kinds of patterns. So I don't see why, why not? Yes. You gotta start marching yes. into the knitters. Yes. You know how it is. Listen, the longer we stay on here, we're gonna come up with a I whole know, right? <laughs> of ideas. Oh my gosh, I'm so yes. excited. But yes. thank you so much for coming on and absolutely giving us some good information, some juicy information. Yeah. I knew you would. I was like, can you please help? <laughs> Oh, well, I appreciate you having that faith in me. I, I, I knew I had a few things to share and I'm glad it was, a, you know, enough to, to keep y'all's attention and hopefully get you on your way. And, you know, whatever little voice in your head is saying, I don't know, you just shut that off. <laughs> Go on and get you can do it. You can do it. Notebook and your paper and, you know, pull up your resources and write that pattern. Because I'm telling you, you listen. You'll be laying in the bed, half sleep, maybe 10 o'clock, maybe 12 o'clock, depending on what time you go to sleep, and your phone's going to go, ka-ching, yeah. and somebody on Etsy bought a pattern. And you're going to go, I was half asleep. I, I love that I sound. I, I love it. I was on yeah. a, a video message with my mom and my sisters, and I kept seeing it. That was when I did a sale, too. I did a huge sale. And I'm looking, and my mother and my sister kept saying, why do you keep turning your, your phone off? I'm like, no, I'm not. It's, I'm getting a message that I got a pattern. Like somebody just bought one of my grass. But mm-hmm. I did it like four times. And it was like, you just, because I, I made just. I dollars in five minutes. Look at that. Yes. So, <laughs> well, my, my grass are like eight, seven dollars, eight dollars. Oh, <laughs> Them things take a lot of work, man. Oh, I, I know. <laughs> no, absolutely. But, um, I'm going to go so that yeah. we can start our pattern work, I guess, because my tutorial Tuesday is tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I got my notifications. They already hit me in my DM with the address. So I'm going to put y'all stuff in the mail tonight. Okay. All right. All right. Thank Have a good well. one. Bye, Love you girl. guys. Bye. Bye.